Hi friends, I'm so glad that you are joining us today for our virtual story time. Now, I may have met you before when we did all of our fun events with little learners at the library. We had Pete the Cat, and one time we had Clifford and Llama Llama. Um, Sometimes we didn't have a character and we just explored and did fun STEAM activities together. Some of you may be here because I've been your teacher before with the Center for Gifted Studies at the camps. Or maybe I taught your class in, in one of your schools. I've taught classes in a lot of different counties um, with my job at Grec. Or maybe you're new here and we've never worked together before. However you find yourself here today for our story time, I'm so glad that you're here. Now, I love to read stories that really make us think and solve problems and maybe even create something new. And that's exactly what you will do today at home with your families. So this activity in this story time is actually from my book called Inspiring Innovation and Creativity and Young Learners. And if you're someone who's been to my story times before or I've taught a lesson in your class, you probably helped me write this book. So I wanna say thank you. We're gonna focus on something today called empathy and we're going to use empathy and a maker space to create a really cool project now before we get started on our steam project which is science technology engineering art and mathematics we're going to do all of those things before we get started on that we're going to have a story time because i love to start with books and i know that you do too now, if you are one of my older children here, like say you're a second or third grader, you might look at this book and think, oh, I read that when I was really little. But here is something really clever. If something is a good book and has a good meaning behind it, even if it was something you enjoyed when you were younger, it's still a good book when you're older because we're gonna do something that will challenge your brain today with it. Now. We're going to read this book, not a box, um, but there's a very similar version, it's upside down, called Not a Stick that we'll reference too. I'm gonna bring in a special helper to help me read Not a Box. I'm here with Joan. And we are going to read one of our very favorite books and it is called Not a Box. That's right. It's called Not a Box. So let's get started, Joe. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. This book is by Antoinette Portis. Hey, why are you sitting in that box? It's not a box. What are you doing on top of that box? Now you're wearing a box? It's not a box. <laughs> I loved your robot voice. <laughs> what? Are you still standing around in that box? It's not, 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 not a box. Look at all of the things. Oh. Well, what is it then? favorite not a box not a box the whole not a box was your favorite yes what was your favorite thing that he made a rocket oh, a rocket i wondered if the rocket would be your favorite i really love that story and you know why because guess what this rabbit is he's an innovator 
He created something that other people couldn't see. Everyone else could only see what? A box, right? But Rabbit could see so much more because he was inspired. He didn't just see a box. What did he see? He saw a car. And that's what innovators have to do. This is a really simple example. But in these next few clips, I'm gonna show you some real life examples of innovators and they're going to tell you their story about what inspired them to take something that was already there and make something magnificent out of it. Hi, we're Andrea Sreshta and Anna Stork and we created a product called The Luminade. We created these when we were in college and there was a devastating earthquake in Haiti. We saw on the news there were lots and lots of people without power and we wanted to create a way to help them. So we made our model just using a Ziploc bag, a solar panel, and a sports bottle cap. And now we create these and send them all over the world to help others. Hello, this is Thomas Edison here. And there's a popular misconception that I invented the light bulb. I actually made the light bulb more practical and more affordable. This was a safer alternative than to having gas light. Hi, this is Garrett Morgan. And one day I was at a dangerous intersection and I saw a really bad accident. I got an idea to create the warning signal on traffic lights from this experience. Hi, my name is Easton LaChapelle. When I was 14 years old, I entered a competition and made a prosthetic arm using Lego pieces. Then I met a seven year old with a real prosthetic arm and I found out it cost tens of thousands of dollars. So I decided to use my 3D printer and create one that only cost hundreds of dollars. Now I own my own company and help create inventions to help others all over the world. Wow, those innovators really did some amazing things, didn't they? And what did all of them have in common? What were all of their inventions doing? And the same is true with our rabbit. If we look at our rabbit here, he invented a car. Well, how did a car help people? It helped people travel maybe more safely. It helped people travel faster. What about Edison? You know, he didn't invent the light bulb. He innovated it, he made it better. He took something that was there and he made it more practical and affordable so everyone could have it. That's what innovators do. And they're underlying, which means the bottom line, the thing they all have in common, is they were doing it to help people. Like Easton LaChapelle. He started off just doing it because he liked to play with Legos, right? And he entered that competition. And then now he learned how to make prosthetic arms for people that need them for tens of thousands of dollars left, all because he wanted to help. That's called empathy. And in the beginning today, I told you that was our really special word. Empathy is what drives innovation a lot of times. Now, what does it mean to have empathy? Well, if you see someone running and they fall down and you say, Oh man, I'm so sad. I'm so sorry that they fell, bless their heart. That's not empathy, that's sympathy. If we wanna be an innovator and use that skill of helping others, we have to go to empathy. And empathy is where you say, man, I hate that they fell. I'm gonna help them up. How can I help make sure they don't fall again? Or if they do fall, they won't get hurt. How might you help someone that was running and they fell? Well, we can look at sports teams. What, what invention was created to help football players or hockey players or baseball players? They have pads, right? And they have mouth guards. See, innovators are everywhere. And that little book, Not a Box, teaches us that. Mr. Casp from Google, you know, a really innovative company. He is, uh, his official title is the chief education evangelist. So he promotes all things education and innovation, okay? And he has this quote I love. It says, you know, families and caregivers and teachers, let's stop asking kids what they wanna be when they grow up. But that's still a good question. It's okay if you're asking it, but there's a better question. 
let's not ask them what they want to be. Let's ask them what problem they want to solve. See, that's how you just shift from what do you want to be to actually becoming an innovator and changing the world. So we're going to focus on that question today. I want you to think about what problem do you want to solve? Now we heard from those innovators and we heard what problems they were interested in solving, but today in our It Matters to Me Makerspace, that's what we're calling this activity, the It Matters to Me Makerspace. What problem do you want to solve? What way do you want to help the world one day? Because our world needs a lot of helpers and you are so capable. And as that reminder, I wore one of my favorite shirts. When I was a little girl, when I was your age, I loved to watch Cinderella. And now I loved the Disney version of Cinderella. I'm talking about the musical Cinderella. My mom taped it for me on VHS. Now, you'll have to ask your parents what VHS and what taped mean. But it, it was like how you can watch something on demand, but we actually had it on tape and we had to put it in. But anyway, it had a, this line that's on my shirt today. And you can't see my whole shirt, but it says, I can be whatever I want to be because you can be whatever you want to be and you can solve whatever problem you want to solve. And today, we're gonna work on creating an invention to solve a problem that matters to you. So what's the first thing that you need to do in the It Matters To Me Makerspace? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to decide what matters most to you. So I paused the camera after I read Not A Box with Jonah and we had that conversation. I said, Jonah, you know, when you grow up or when you get bigger or now, what problem would you like to solve? How would you like to help others? I don't know how to hard time answering that question. There were so many ways that he could help others. We talked about you can help animals, you can help adults, you can help the elderly, you can help the earth, um, you can help kids. So the first thing you'll want to decide is who do you want to help? Jonah decided that he wanted to help kids. And then we had to decide, what are you gonna help them do? So Jonah thought about all of his interest. He loves sports, he loves history, he loves the solar system, he loves caring for others. So it was hard to choose, but we have to pick just one thing for this workshop. Jonah chose to create an invention to help kids learn about the solar system. So that's what he's going to create. And now for the really fun part. We went on a scavenger hunt around our house to fill this bag with as many odd bits that might have been destined for the trash can, okay? To create his prototype or his model for his invention. I'm gonna show you a sampling of some things he collected. Now I gave him the choice that he could find, use a box or a stick to create his invention. And he chose a box because our inspiration for this story was not a box or not a stick, but we use whatever you have in your house. We happened to have a box left over from a projector that had some pretty cool cardboard pieces with it. We also found a Kleenex box. So those were his boxes, but as he was searching for things that might have been destined for the trash or recycling bin, we found these leftover paper straws from another craft project. We found some applesauce caps and a cap that was actually on a Coke bottle from one of our vacations. We found some little bits of plastic and we found some Ziploc bags. And we also found some things that he could use as tools. So we found different kinds of tape. And we found a hole punch and scissors. And we may find more things as we're, as we're creating. Basically, you can use whatever your parents give you permission to use, but the recycling bin is a good place to start. Now, I do want you to promise that before you collect any materials, you will ask an adult to help you collect those materials. So we know we're, that you're definitely using things that they want you to use. Now you know who you want to help and you've collected your materials, at least enough to get you started. What do you do? Well, you need to make a plan. 
you need to think about what are the, um, this is Jonah's plan, and you need to think about what are the important components of your design and maybe draw a picture of what your design will look like. Scientists often record their findings and their sketches of their prototypes in journals. Did you know scientists are writers too? So you need to be sure that you do that. After you've made your sketch and created your plan together as a family, then you're ready to build. I'm getting ready to go help Jonah build now. We'll come back in a little bit and I'll share with you what we've created. I'm gonna tell you all about my robot. These flaps are called solar panels. That's right, they help power your robot. This is a 360 camera. That's right, that camera takes pictures. Camera. That's right, that camera takes pictures all the way around. And at the bottom, it moves like, what's your favorite robot that you said it moves like? This. Like this, like R2-D2. And this is its control panel with all the buttons and knobs. And this little bag here, you said what happens in there? Like this. Oh, like that? It's the straw sucks up things and it collects them? Then, after Jonah finished his creation, he drew a picture and wrote about it. Because scientists and engineers are also writers, aren't they? Yes. So that's all about Jonah's robot to help children learn about the solar system. I can't wait, and Jonah can't wait, to see your inventions. So if you will read the description above, we'll tell you how you can share your inventions back with us. Say, we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Bye.